how the pride movement will destroy sodomy. Um, I remember I saw this video a while back. There was some public town hearing thing or whatever meeting, and people could bring up whatever subject they wanted to bring up. And there was a guy that was there, and he said that he is a gay man, you know, and uh, they, I don't like how they take that word. Gay in the Bible means happy, but another issue. But, you know, he's a gay man, and he's not for this pride flag. And he was trying to rip this pride flag thing up. Um, pretty interesting. But the point that he was trying to make is that it's a matter of personal preference. It isn't something that should be uh, militarized and turned into this weapon to divide people. And that's what the whole pride movement is about. And the anger is increasing right now. Um from people that are not into that whole system and it's being done on purpose. It's another divide and conquer type of strategy. Um, you say, oh, come on now, it's not, it's not a military thing, that's ridiculous. Really? Um, do militaries march on the streets? Yes, they do. Um, and you're not supposed to attack the military when they're marching on the streets. Well, isn't that what the uh, pride movement is doing right now? They have their marches. Um, does the military have a, its own flag, the collars of the military, yes. Um, do we see that with the pride movement? Yes, we do. Um, and you can just get down through the list. You know, the military, they paint these things on, on the crosswalks, and if you attack that, then you get thrown in prison and whatever else, or fined and things. Uh, these little teenage boys, and they're, they're going out, and they had their little electric scooters, and they're burning they you know they did a little slide or something and made a black mark with the tire on the thing it's a hate crime or whatever if you've seen that story it's absurd absolutely absurd but that's what they're doing and um see it's turned into a military tactic that they're using to divide and conquer luther come luther come here every time i walk out here he comes along and then he walks out onto the road so, here he comes. Doesn't always listen to the voice of his master. A lot of people are like that. <laughs> they don't listen to the voice of God. Um, so, I'm not trying to compare myself to God. I'm just trying to say um, the Bible compares certain people to natural brute beasts. But um, getting back to what I was saying... Uh, understand where this whole thing is going. Again, as a Christian, you have to, to look at things and you have to say, um, we have to fight against this perversion agenda. Why? Because it's a military agenda. And if you don't do anything against it, then they will use it as a way to persecute Christians. Um, you know, when they put a, a uh, this pride flag with the different collars and the you know, they have the, the new one with a little triangular thing there. I don't even care what the names are, you know. Um, old Brother Brian, it's the, it's the such and such. A, I don't care whatever they call the thing. It's a military flag. And when they're putting that thing out there, they're saying we hate God and the Bible and those who stand for the scriptures. That's what that flag means. It's an anti-Christian flag. It's an anti-God, anti-Bible flag. That's what it is. And they're well, we, you can't speak about this on social media because it's a hate crime and whatever. See, it's anti-Christian. Um, it's open persecution of Christians. Now, they don't quite have the power yet to completely go after all Christians and, you know, put us in prison or something like that. Um, they don't quite have that yet, but they're pushing for it. So we have to take a very hard stand against this whole system. And again... Understand, if you're a sodomite out there, which is the Bible word for two men together, and there's no Bible word for two women together, so that's why I call both groups, it falls under the umbrella of sodomy. Um, I don't care, okay? I don't care what two consenting adults do behind closed doors. I don't want to live in a society where we have the police and they can go and search homes and whatever else and things and go in there. Um, what you do... In the privacy of your home is your business. Um, I know what the Bible teaches about two men together or two women together. It's an abomination in God's sight. Absolutely, and I'll never say it isn't. But, you know, what two people do between themselves, I don't care. 
Um, and you know, there was this big debate years ago with the new IFB, New Independent Fundamental Baptist, led by Stephen Anderson, his little cult that he had before it fell apart completely because of they were, you know, perverts and a lot of other issues. But they had this whole thing of this reprobate doctrine. Oh, we can declare that uh, sodomites are reprobates and, and they can't get saved or something. Just a bunch of nonsense. And it was funny because it just, it comes from Calvinism. Um, again, you know, the doctrine of reprobation and all this other stuff. Uh, I mean, I understand it from the theological angle of why it doesn't line up with the scriptures. But I also understand it from the political science type of uh, understanding. Um, that they wanted to create a political system whereby anybody that falls under the realm of sodomy, anybody could be put to death. That's what they were pushing for. And there are radical people, alt-right radicals, that want to have, um, you know, death penalty and whatever for people that don't follow certain standards and things. And that might sound good, but it's not really that good because all it takes then is just to get the alt-right Catholics to say anybody who speaks against the Catholic Church, they're speaking against the church that Christ founded, and, and then they put them to death, which is, you know, the Dark Ages. So uh, you don't want to have a political system there that can just put people to death over moral issues. Um, again, you get that in Islamic countries and things. They put sodomites to death in Islamic countries, um, <clears throat> which is not the right thing. Again, there are young people that are molested as children, and it messes up their head, and then they think, I'm a guy, but I was treated like a girl. Well, maybe I'm more of a girl than I am a guy, and it, it's, it messes them all up, and they'll get into sodomy as a result. And it, you know, if you can get to them and straighten out their head and say, no, it was wrong what was done to you, get through that whole thing, and you know, give them proper biblical counsel, then they can go on to get married and you know, understand the biblical thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 about um, it's better not to marry, but if you are burning with lust, then you need to marry. And it's a husband and a wife. And then when you have children, you learn a lot of things about how the Lord has to deal with us and, and whatever. When you become a father, um, you'll learn some really neat lessons and uh, some tie-ins as to, like I said, how God uh, deals with his children when you have children of your own. Um, <clears throat> And so, my point being, uh, this pervert movement, the pride movement, um, again, Scripture, pride goeth before destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. Uh, the Bible never speaks good of pride. That's why you never say, I'm proud of this ministry, or I'm, I'm proud of what God's done for me, or proud. You don't ever use the word pride or proud in a positive sense, because the Bible doesn't. You say, I'm well pleased, I'm very thankful, I'm blessed, I'm whatever. Those are all biblical words. Again, the Bible should be your um, language uh, lexicon, we'll say. It should define how you speak. Um, you don't have to go around you know, saying beholdeth and things like that unless you're quoting scripture. Um, we don't use the, the proper English anymore in our normal day-to-day -day speech. I guess they might some places or whatever, but here in America we don't. Um, but certainly quote scripture and quote it as it is. Don't feel a need to change it and update it and whatever else. But um, should we fight against this LGBTQI thing plus whatever? Should we fight against it? Yes, we should. Are these people uh, mentally ill? Um, yes, it's becoming that. Of, you know, there is a sense of mental illness there because you're going against what God said. Um, and you have to look at it from that angle. Again, a young person that has been molested as a child, there is some mental illness there, not of their own fault. It was done to them, and therefore, you know, they, you know, should have help with that mental illness. Again, the Bible says to comfort the feeble, feeble minded. Um, you don't go and say, well, you're involved in sodomy because you were molested as a child, so therefore uh, we're going to put you to death now or something. 
you know, help them through that situation. Uh, so, but I, I can see this as one of the bigger things that's trending, so to speak. One of the bigger things that now is uh, kind of coming to the forefront. And not just because of the month of June and they're pushing this sodomite agenda on people, this flying these military collars and whatever else. Um, it's not just that, it's all the time. And I can see that they're trying to, uh, you know, push the hate crime thing, which is just an absolute abomination. Um, they're trying to push that. So, uh, everything I'm trying to say here, brethren, is, you know, there's things that we have to do and we have to look at and we have to say, okay, um, it isn't all just about preaching the gospel to people. There are other things that come up which we have to fight and we, which we have to see as a danger to the body of Christ. And, um, you know, we have to be involved politically in the sense of praying about things, speaking out about things. Um, you know, at one point in time, Americans, you know, Christians here in America, they would take political office. Well, now the political system is so corrupt, I don't even think it would work, to be quite frank with you, unless it's just on a local level or something, you know, but pray about these things and get active, do something, okay? Uh, don't just rely on ministries uh, like this one here and, oh, Brother Brian will take care of things, he'll fight our battles for us and whatever. Yeah, man, you know, you need to take an active role yourself. Find something to do. Print your own tracks. Don't send them to me and say, Brother Brian, what do you think of my tracks? I'm not your God, okay? Line them up with Scripture. Do your own tract writing. Do your own uh, street preaching or your own name it. Find something to do, okay? And um, But, you know, this pervert agenda, this... LGBTQI thing, whatever, um, it is a serious threat. And it's good to see a movement rising up against it, but we can't support total, um, you know, death penalty and whatever else for that system, for the people involved in it. I will not stand for that. I will not defend that type of a thing that the new IFB was trying to bring out years ago. I will not defend it. But, um, this, uh, the pride system with all the flags and everything, that needs to be destroyed. And uh, that is a wicked thing. And um, so, just thought I should put that out there. And uh, something to definitely consider, something to think about. And um, I just hope and pray that the body of Christ really wakes up and starts to do things. And... Uh, get some thing done so i have to head to the office now I have a bunch of errands to run the day and so upload this video quickly and uh, please do keep us in your prayers as always i have a bunch of different studies i'm working on right now and uh, some interesting things to come out with in the future that will be it thank you for watching